boats arrived, Wales v England, Cardiff in all its glory as it welcomed its neighbours from across the Severn Bridge. Two teams unbeaten in this Six Nations Championship, the stadium is set for a momentous occasion. In Haloid. In Tailey. In Tyr. Or Angeth. My Sigad. Come on, Cymru! None other than Luke Evans then to hype us up for this huge occasion. Not that we need any hyping up, and the gentlemen next to me certainly don't. Mr Sam Warburton and Martin Johnson, welcome. Sam, Eddie all week has been saying this is the greatest Welsh side ever. They're the clear favourites. We're to read nothing into that, of course. But in all seriousness, what can we take from the fact that they're now 11 and beaten on the trot? I think this game is actually the definitive game which will tell us how good they actually are because we weren't sure in the summer how strong South Africa and Argentina were. There were some good wins against Australia and South Africa in the autumn, but Australia, there was a question mark over Australia. Um, and then obviously the last two weekends, you've got good wins away from home, but the performance hasn't been what perhaps people would have liked. But it's 11 wins, which is great at any level of test rugby. So, But this game now at home against an in-form England team will be a real marker. And it's, uh, you know, England are now third in the rankings, justifiably so, and Wales are fourth. So I think that will really tell us you know, who probably is the third best team in the world. Martin, the Red Roses are probably leaving around about now for that journey into the city centre on the bus. I quite like hearing tales about that journey. Danny Kerr this week was talking about middle-aged, older women swearing at the bus. Is it really that bad? And what are your memories of it? It's, it's part of the whole day when you come. Uh, the, the bus ride, you, know, you, you go into the game. And yeah, of course, you know, they're passionate about it. So, um, it, to be honest, with you, I think we all enjoyed it. You know, we enjoyed it. It's part of the build-up. It gets you in the mood. Every game you play is unique in terms of the locations when you're away from home, but Cardiff particularly is very, very intense and very, very passionate. You know, this game's been building for two weeks, so it's that later kick-off, so everyone's been out in the pubs for an extra couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I mean, it's why we love this tournament. You know, I'd, I'd much rather have people giving you a bit of grief than, than ignoring you. you know, there's, no, there's no indifference in Wales. They, they, they let you know, but that's, that's fantastic. That's, what, that's, a, that's a challenge coming here, you know, particularly for England as a, an away team is to overcome that uh, and try and win the game. And a contrasting experience for both sides. It's your first match at home for England. Will you miss that on your end? Um, I, I've been asked that numerous times already walking on the stage here. I mean, I don't miss, um, I mean, because I still remember what it felt like physically towards the end of my career. So right now, it's not like, oh, I'd love to just chuck a red shirt on and run out of the tunnel at kickoff, but I don't forget what it takes to get to that point, you know? But yeah, of course, as a player, um, my, my favourite experience was 2013, not because it was England, it was just because it was at home in front of your, in front of your home crowd, winning a championship. So yeah, those moments I'll never get back and I'll cherish, but yeah, the, what the players have put themselves through to get to this position you know, is, a, is a lot of hard work. And a quick prediction from you both. When you look back at Wales, England, over the last few years, it doesn't feel as if it's been that comfortable for either side, whoever you're supporting. Maybe you'll have to go back to the 33 game to when you know one team or one set of supporters could actually sit back and enjoy it. Do you see it being a tight affair where there are a few clear-cut opportunities today? Everybody always wishes when we play at home it's going to be a 33 again, and I think that's a once-in-a-generation perhaps even a few decades, that, that doesn't happen very often. So I d that definitely won't happen today, either side of the scoreboard. And I think nine times out of 10, there is normally a try in it. So looking at it objectively, totally England would be winners on form. But I think today is one of those games in the Six Nations, like it was in Ireland in round one when they played England, that is going to be very much on the day and it's anyone's game. And would you go along with that, Martin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, look I, I, I can't see, like Sam said, I can't see, it could happen. But it doesn't happen very often. Like, both teams are very confident in their defences, I think. Uh, it could be quite cagey. You know, England have, have, have probably shown more of their kicking game. They've changed how they've played and it's been effective. So Wales know what's coming. Uh, it's how much they want to kick back. or That's the interesting thing. But it, it normally comes down to who can just take those chances. Both teams will have them. Both teams will have opportunities in the game and the ebb and flow. And who can, who can get over the line and score the try. 
I'm not sure why we continue to make predictions for these games. There's a real sense anything could happen. But the Wales of England action started last night at Stadium Zipwild in Colwyn Bay, where there was real drama at the death for the under 20s. Ending. Uh, really pleased with the second half. To be fair, we spoke a lot about keeping pressure on England, and you know, we really did that to go, you know, take a six-three lead. Um, we despite the concede the try that we did, but that, you know, the character the boys showed after that was uh, superb to come and uh, you know, pull the game back. We got into the year 22 a few times, and we disappointed we couldn't convert a few things. You know, Max Clawley made a great line break. We didn't get supportive quick enough, but. Defensive effort was excellent. You could see England were frustrated at half time, only being 3 0 up. Um, but we spoke about that, you know, we felt England were looking for the touchline in 40 minutes, and um, so that's what we spoke about building pressure in the second half, and um, yeah, that showed and, pay, and paid off by the end. The boys played for 18 minutes, and that's, that's what was needed today. Um, I think we were in dead time when that try was scored, 82 minutes, so uh, it was really important that we did what we didn't do against France, and that's play for the full 80, and the boys did that today. So I think there was a couple of chances for both sides early in that uh, first half, and uh, to go in only 3-0 down against a strong England side uh, was very pleasing for the boys, and it gave us a lot of confidence coming in out for the second half that we could put a shift in. It's a, well, it's a Welsh boys' dream, really. Uh, as I say, the gap was there, and luckily managed to take it, and uh, got the boys what they deserved. Do you know what I mean? They worked a good shift for the boys to get us in that position, really, so yeah, glad. Glad I could finish it off. It was huge. Uh, momentum's a big thing in this game, but uh, you know we know not to get complacent. We know Scotland is still going to be a challenge. Um, they're going to want to come at us, and we really got to keep keep playing at the levels we're playing at, and I'm sure we'll be fine. It was my first experience here, and uh, it was fantastic. It was um, felt pretty emotional. The uh, anthem, I mean, it was sung brilliantly, and the support has been uh, superb. Um, and we, yeah, me and the other coaches became part of that really on that, on that last score we lost total composure in the box there. It's always easier, you know, we, we, you, never, you never play the perfect game but it's always easier to work on those when, you, when you've got those wins uh, behind you and that'll give the boys a hell of a lot of confidence so um, yeah, it's a good chance to take those and, and continue our growth as a squad. A huge congratulations to Gareth Williams and his team. 33, the scoreline that will live long in the memory. The day England came to Cardiff with the hopes of a Grand Slam, but Wales had other plans. They ran riot to seal the championship. We don't need an excuse to relive it, and neither do some of the players. That is world class. That is a brilliant finish. You may well get there. Last day, title decider with both sides in with a real chance of winning the championship and of course for England, at the man on. The equation was fairly simple. You play must. I'm just frozen three. Ah, oh, dang it. The year before. Ah, oh, the year after. Is it? Oh, it must be me. I think it was a Marshall Rugby Club watching this game. Go on, boys. In the 51st minute, Welsh progress was stalled when England went offside. Ooh. And Halfpenny was given the chance to make it four from four, which he duly did.
and suddenly Wales had the margin required to seal championship success. Easy. And that lead was extended a few minutes later. Substitute hooker Ken Owens turned the ball over in midfield and the Welsh quickly moved the ball wide for Alex Cuthbert to make a dash for the line. I'm fast out of Shift it. Mike Brown doesn't miss many tackles either. England unable to stop the six foot six winger and when he dived over it started to look like a repeat of 1999 when Wales denied England the Grand Slam. I think it was here actually. Oh yeah. Stepping around up like Look for a call up, like, yeah. top my boots just in case. Did you? Yeah, I'll watch this one. There he goes. Sam Warburton started the move inside his own half. Oh, Sam, go on. And when flanker Jason Tapurik received it. Jason Tapurik. <laughs> <laughs> he tapped him off. He did really well to draw the tacklers before releasing Cuthbert to cross the line for his and Wales' second try of the afternoon. Goes and gives us. He could have showed this himself, unselfish. And Wales knew that the win and the championship was theirs. Yeah, so I'm in that, don't I? Be tidy when that one, don't I? You playing against England? Man? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you? I don't know, but it was Gethin Jenkins and the injured Ryan Jones who had the pleasure of raising the trophy as the Welsh supporters raised the roof at the Millennium Stadium. It's the last time Gethin smiled at us. <laughs> Women were hoping for their first win of the championship against the Red Roses, who had two bonus point wins from two matches. Injured number eight, Shonet Harris, was there watching on our behalf. Yes, the great Kentucky and a Chris Koch and a great lad, Lenny Ma. I have it, Scotty Kai, sitting right on the Well, but I'm a little bit of a little bit of a over the moon. Um, the great Kentucky, my mother, lot to be um, to watch in Gwithion Gallad through pre season at Tinkerath, Tinkerath, the six uh, Hueg lad uh, to watch Egal Dechra, Agigal Scotty Kai, Kentucky, have it, my just an unread death. Yeah, but I'm a great this to Kai, some moment to know them and Hannah Amser. Uh, Snowy, Kevin or Heidi, say game or they game Brazil. Oh my gosh, I didn't even get in the I'm a little bit really did that game and have a moment. I've been playing over quite a game seven. I'm even getting it. I quite have been knackered. And uh, now then, I think we've had a win for Brazil. Well, Kevin or and um, been really, really proud of my head on that on that hand air game and that. Oh, them brilliant. He's got a die case and I've been in a team of guys and a beat have it. Yeah, really proud of him. Yeah, but now because the guy on air and the guy on game down my head. Chefed, they own. This Wales team had the chance of creating history by becoming the first Welsh side to win 12 on the bounce. In their way, Eddie Jones is England. We're firing on all cylinders. The teams are ready. The roof is open. It doesn't get much better than this.
A brutal test match with a brilliant finish for Wales fans, creating history by winning 12 on the bounce, made all the more sweeter with that record-breaking win coming against England. They'll take a week off now before they go again in Murrayfield.